never told her, we can't afford her, in the battle, we're tried and true. Welcome to Indiana Basketball Weekly. I'm Mike Goodpaster. Today we're going to recap, review the Indiana Hoosiers season 2023-2024. And as always, if you're going to bet on March Madness, you can go to BetMGM to find the best place for betting on March Madness. Click on the link in the description below on this video. All right, guys, we're going to review this Indiana Hoosier season, which is like most Indiana Hoosier seasons we've seen over the last quarter of a century. We're going to talk a little bit about Coach Mike Woodson. We're going to talk about the team. We're going to talk about Liam McNeely and why he left, because I think it is obvious why he left from all sources I have from the East Coast all the way to the state of Indiana. This is not conjecture. We're going to see if Mike Woodson should be the head coach, or we're going to talk about whether Mike Woodson should be the head coach still. Now, I know during the season I've made comments that question Mike Woodson's coaching ability. I know that I used to have a co-host on here named Brian Moore, who runs the Got Woodson Facebook page, which has a lot of great people on it. The problem I have is this. I have a problem with people who say that if you think a man is not doing his job and you say it, that you're not a true Indiana Hoosier fan. Indiana is basketball, guys. It always has been. From the early 20th century to now, Indiana is basketball. You know, the old saying is, every place else is just a game. And Indiana is a way of life. I remember growing up shoveling snow in Aurora, Indiana, so I could shoot hoops. I remember emulating Isaiah Thomas or Quint Buckner or Steve Alford or Mike Woodson even. I want the Indiana Hoosiers to win. I want them to be successful. I want Coach Woodson to be successful. He hasn't been. This has been an utter disaster this season. People will use all kinds of excuses. Xavier Johnson was hurt. Does it matter? Does it really matter? I mean, Xavier Johnson is a guy who, and when you watch Senior Night, the senior night thing was absolutely one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Because I remember Brian telling me, did you watch senior night? Did you watch all the speeches? Did you watch Trey Galloway? Did you watch Anthony Leal? Yeah, I watched him. My question is, why is a junior getting a framed jersey for senior night when he's not leaving? Why is he speaking? Why is the head coach standing up there and saying, I and me so damn much that it's unbelievable? This is a team that played selfish. This is a coach that has been selfish. Everything is I, me. There's no transparency in the program. And I'm sorry, no, you don't have to answer the media's questions. But if you don't answer the media's questions, the coaches don't know what your, or the fans don't know what your direction for this program is. The assistant coaches sit on the sideline and do nothing. The head coach walks around and does nothing. There's no coaching going on here. The offense is archaic, archaic. It is almost like they're trying to make the field of 32 in 1979 instead of the field in 68 present day. The defense is horrible. The offense is horrible. They had a five-game winning streak. When they had that five-game winning streak, I thought, well, maybe it's figured something out. I said that on this show. But then we saw the end of the season against Nebraska. And... Indiana fans, we hear all the time, we heard Mike Woodson say it on senior night. Mike Woodson said, true Indiana fans. So to Mike Woodson, a true Indiana fan is somebody who blindly sticks his head in the dirt while the team gets their ass kicked. They're an embarrassment to the university. They're an embarrassment to the state of Indiana. How many times did we watch this team play games where they didn't even try? And it wasn't just this year. If you remember two years ago, they beat Wyoming in the first four. They had a good run at the end of the season. They played St. Mary's, and the team quit. Then the excuse, excuse was, well, they had to play a bunch of games. You know, they were tired because they played on Saturday and lost to the Big Ten semifinal. And then they had to play on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then they had to play, like, on just a day's rest. All those excuses are that. They're excuses. A true fan does not make excuses. A true basketball coach does not make excuses. 
we watched Northwestern this year lose Ty Berry. They lost a Nicholson kid, their big man underneath. They still played hard. They still won games. Northwestern's in the NCAA tournament again. And they're not in the first four. They're in the actual NCAA tournament. Northwestern is. Wisconsin in the NCAA tournament. I have issues with Mike Woodson or Brian Moore, who was a guest host on this show. He was a guest host on this show because I thought he was somebody who could bring something different than what I would. I bring you the truth. Brian Moore shoves his head in the sand and ignores what goes on around him. He knows nothing about anything pertaining to basketball if he thinks that the culture of Indiana is going in the right direction and the head coach should stay. I know the head coach is going to stay, but he shouldn't. And if we look at the hirings of head coaches, Mike Davis was hired because they put it to the players to vote. Or Mike Davis was hired after Bob Knight was fired because the, the players wanted him. Kelvin Sampson was here. Kelvin Sampson is a hell of a basketball coach. He made illegal phone calls. He got fired. They hired Tom Crean. Tom Crean came in. Yeah, a couple of Big Ten championships. Went to the Sweet 16 a couple of times. Got fired. Archie Miller was hired. Nobody else was interviewed. Archie Miller was the man as soon as Tom Crean was fired. With Mike Woodson, nobody else was interviewed. Mike Woodson was the man. All right. I wrote an article three years ago when he was hired called Mike Woodson Doomed to Failure. The doom to failure for Mike Woodson is the fact that he was an NBA basketball coach who had never stepped foot as a college basketball coach ever. He's 65 years old. That's not going to work out. Am I questioning whether Mike Woodson could coach basketball or not? No. I'm sure if this was 30 years ago, 40 years ago, Mike Woodson would do a fine job. But this is 2024 and the landscape has changed. An NBA coach after the game can go home, kick his feet up, smoke a cigar and drink his wine. A high school or a college basketball coach can't do that. He's got all these kids on campus he has to take care of. He has to recruit. Trent Sisley was not recruited, not seen in game until a sectional semifinal by Mike Woodson. Mike Woodson's coaching staff is an absolute joke. But yet, even after a failed season this year, and it was a failed season, I saw stupid ass comments saying, well, if they could win this game, the Nebraska game, they'll have a 20-win season. Well, that's because you played 10 programs that weren't that good at the start of the year, and you barely beat most of them. This is a team that almost lost to Army. Army! Bob Knight's not coaching at Army anymore. That's unacceptable. I'm an Indiana Hoosier fan. When I question it, I don't expect some coach who's not doing his job to tell me I'm not a true fan. Xavier Johnson? Mike Woodson said in senior night that Xavier Johnson had to take more crap. Only, of course, Mike Woodson, speaking as the head basketball coach at Indiana, stood out there and cursed multiple times while using I and me to everything and said that Xavier Johnson had to put up with him. Xavier Johnson is a crybaby. He's a good defensive player who offensively is not very good. I mean, half the time, he'll turn the ball over five times in a game because five different times he'll just grab the ball, dribble with his head down, and try to shoot it. It doesn't work like that. This team this year was an utter disgrace to Indiana basketball. It was worse than the Tom Crean rebuild years. Those teams had reasons, they, they not excuses. Excuses are for losers. And that's all you hear from this. And when you're an Indiana basketball fan and you allow a team that doesn't try and you still back the lack of effort, it doesn't make me not a true Indiana fan because I expect to see effort at least. You got Khalil Ware, you got Mbako, you got you know Malik Renu, all three guys that could possibly end up in the NBA someday. But yet it's all right to get you know beat twice by Penn State to get beat twice by Northwestern, give me a break. That's not Indiana basketball. That's not what I, as an Indiana fan, signed up for. Indiana basketball, to me, is extremely important. 
when I grew up, it was extremely important. You know, I grew up hearing, because I lived in Aurora, Indiana, like 25 minutes from Milan. I ended up hearing the stories about Bobby Plump and the Milan Indians. I remember the 1977 Aurora Red Devils who went to the Elite Eight and just fell short by three points to Columbus East. I remember what the crowds at the sectional at East Central or sectional at South Dearborn was, where the place was packed. And it meant more than anything to those people, to the players, to the fans. I know this, you go to barber shops in Indiana. In Aurora, there's still a barber shop where you walk in and there's pictures of Bobby Knight. There's present day count team calendars. Don't you think we as fans in this state deserve more than what we've gotten this year? What we've gotten this year is an arrogant coach who basically thinks it's his way or the highway. He's 65 years old and he's set in his ways. As we sit here today, almost in April, Indiana has no high school players recruited. They lost Liam McNeely for a couple reasons. And if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong and then show me where I'm wrong. They lost Liam McNeely because once they had him sign, Mike Woodson didn't really want to take the time to reach out to him continuously to make sure he was doing all right. That's what a coach does. Whether it's a player on your team or a guy coming in, you check on their well-being, you talk to them, you try to develop a relationship. The other thing is this. The offense, there's no way Liam McNeely wants to come here. He's a wing. He's not a big man. This is an offense that is run from the inside out, outside in, whatever you want to call it. But it's an archaic offense that does not fit Liam McNeely. Derek Queen should be here. But no, what they saw was an offense that didn't change. When they were recruited, they were promised the offense would change when they got here. The offense never changed. Sure, they're not here yet, but it looks like you would start to change it with Mbako. Mike Woodson does not develop players. If you remember, Trace Jackson Davis was not a Mike Woodson guy. Maybe Mike Woodson improved him. Mike Woodson never improved it so he would have a mid-range jump shot. And Trace Jackson Davis has improved a lot since he got to the Golden State Warriors. The Trace Jackson Davis you watch with the Warriors now is a product uh, product of Steve Kerr or, of Steve Kerr and that coaching staff at Golden State. Khalil Ware was in a miserable situation for him with Dana Altman because Dana Altman didn't like the fact that he thought that Ware was soft. And if you look at every big game Indiana had, Khalil Ware disappeared if there was a good big man in front of him. This team was soft. They lacked discipline. There was almost never anybody diving on the ball, or as Steve Risley said, you get the Vaseline out and practice and go after it. It never happened with this team. Mike Woodson also quit on his team. You know, I know in many shows I said, I wish Mike Woodson would get thrown out of the game just to make a point, just to try to fire his team up. But damn, when he did it, they're down 20 and the game's almost over. He quit on his team. And I'm not a true Indiana fan. If I don't approve of that, Quinn Buckner, his buddy, is the man who hired him. From everything I hear, Scott Dolson would love to go a different way. They gave Mike Woodson a million-dollar bonus for getting his ass kicked in the second round by Miami of Florida. The basketball Miami of Florida. To get beat by 18 points, 20 points, whatever it was. million extra dollars. Just think if Woody ever got to the Sweet 16. Problem is this, Woody ain't ever getting to the Sweet 16. And I've heard people say, and people I respect, well, you can't change coaches every three or four. You can change coaches every year if the guy you got sucks. Mike Woodson sucks. That doesn't make me not a true Indiana fan. That makes me fed up with watching a team that doesn't try a coach that doesn't try in recruiting during the season? Am I really not a true fan because I can see what is happening here? I'm not stupid. And yes, if you blindly support this, make no mistake, 
you are stupid. And you're a disgrace to Indiana basketball if you support this. And the thing that gets me is a lot of these people rip on Kelvin Sampson. Kelvin Sampson is what, a number one seed in the NCAA tournament this year? What would this program have been like if they'd have had that? Right now, you, you could get Pat Kelsey, who's a hell of a coach. DeMay kid's a good coach. There's guys out there that you could bring in that are young guys, that are energetic, but they're not here. Dad Mata was here for a year. He left, became the head coach of Butler. That's fine, but, I mean, Dad Mata would be fine here, too, as the head coach. Dane Fife was unceremoniously released, basically just for his politics. I mean, if he was running around supporting abortion and trans rights, he'd still be a coach. But you can't have an opinion different than our liberal Democratic coach who basically just called a bunch of Indiana fans not true fans because they don't like the fact that we lose 12 or 13 games every year. And make no mistake about it, if the schedule wasn't so soft at the start of the season, this team wouldn't approach 20 wins. Now, when I did this show this year, it started off with me, Steve Risley, Brian Moore. It's just me now. And that's basically because we had a division between the other two and they couldn't stand each other because of it. The show's down to just me right now. The Grueling True Sports Network is here because... I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to be politically correct. Mike Woodson's a joke. When he sits there and talks about Xavier Johnson, if you're not an IU fan, if you don't love Xavier Johnson, Xavier Johnson is a man that was ran out of the University of Pittsburgh after a couple good years because he was a cancer. So what's what he do? I'm one of the first guys he recruits is the cancer. What happens when the cancer gets here? Well, the cancer does what cancers do. The cancer drives 90 miles an hour in the middle of the night, puts people at risk, puts lives at risk. And then when he gets caught driving 90 in a 40, he doesn't take responsibility. He switches seats and tries to blame it on somebody else. That's not a leader, Mike Woodson. And the fact that you think a man that does that can lead your team makes you a complete and utter moron. Nobody here has been recruited yet. I, I looked up the basketball programs that made the most money. Last year, the Indiana Hoosiers were fifth, $25 million. There is a lot of people. There, there are no more passionate fans than Indiana Hoosier fans. And to sit here and tell people, I mean, I, if you are one of these people to think you support this blindly no matter what, and if you don't, you're not a true Indiana fan. Does that make Brian Evans not a true Indiana fan? I mean, maybe it does, but all I know is the man was played Indiana basketball. He's pretty damn good. You know, the early 90s teams he were on were damn good. Does that mean that he is not a true Indiana man? But... Joe Blow, who's on, you know, some Facebook page as a mini Hitler, can go ahead and say whatever he wants. Man, I, I saw on these pages, on Facebook pages, whether it's Uncensored or Got Woodson or iUnity, I, I saw people making statements about the Nebraska Guard. You know, you see, well, he's a samurai, which, yeah, that's a term of endearment. But it's not when you say it in a way that is not. When you sit there and say he's a samurai and talk about how much you hate him. You know, Tamanagua, whatever his name is, the kid plays with passion. If you're an Indiana fan and you don't like him, you're an idiot. Because what we saw this year was a bunch of passionless players. And to include Anthony Leo and Trey Galloway and senior night when they're coming back next year, doesn't that take away from the seniors that are actually seniors and graduating? I mean, I think this, I think those guys were put out there because they're fan favorites. They're going to get cheers. 
Everybody's going to be excited about them, and they're going to ignore the arrogant, big-ass coach who's sitting there running his mouth, saying he's done his job. I mean, Mike Woodson, when he got here, said his job was to win banners, including national championships, Big Ten championships. For reading the quote from Mike Woodson on senior night, Woody says, there should never be any questions about my job based on what I've done here. Since I arrived at Indiana as the coach, I've done my job, and I'm going to continue to do it. So does that mean we're going to continue to go 19 and 13? And the only reason we're going 19 and 13 is because we're beating bad teams and barely beating bad teams. Indiana basketball, once again, means something. This is the only state. We're all over the country. I remember in 1978 going to Daytona Beach with my parents and my sister. First real big, first time I've seen the ocean. I'm in a pool at the hotel. And there's this adult male in there swimming. I'm swimming. And, you know, he asked me where I'm from. I'm like, I'm from Indiana. He says, where at in Indiana? I said, Aurora. He said, is that anywhere near Milan? I said, yeah, about 25 minutes away. And then he went on for 10 minutes to talk about Bobby Plump and that small school with like a hundred and some students that beat Muncie Central. And how 40,000 people showed up in that town because of that. Indiana basketball will never die. But it's not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be because you got class basketball. You, you don't have everybody's got a chance to win the championship because you got to give everybody a fair chance to get a trophy, I guess. But I can tell you this, growing up in the 70s and 80s, I think winning a sectional championship in 1979 in your community was a bigger deal than winning a Class 1A or 5A state basketball championship because it meant something. It's something If you go to almost any community in Indiana, there is a team. I talked about 1977 Aurora. There's 1966 Aurora. You go to Lawrenceburg, you talk about the teams in the late 40s, the team, I think, in 1993 that went to the Sweet 16. Every town has that team that did something special that meant so much to that team or it meant so much to that town that they're still talked about to this day. But that's gone. You know, when I write the articles about the best high school basketball teams in Indiana State history, I never bring up class basketball teams. Because not many people care. I mean, the Indiana High School Basketball State Championships will be on this weekend. 70s and 80s, I watch it on Channel 4, WTTV. Used to have to have big rabbit ears. The picture would be snowy because I'm in southeastern Indiana, pretty far away from Indianapolis. But if I, if I couldn't get it in, I would listen to it. Now, I could pay like 5 or $10, watch all the games in high definition. But I don't care. I hope that that doesn't start happening with Indiana basketball because I can tell you the game against Nebraska, I didn't do a post game show about it because I didn't even see what he get pitched. I watched the first half and I thought, what the hell is the point? They've got no chance because they're not trying. This is a team that plays like they're miserable. That comes from the head coach. And next year, we're going to go play again with that same head coach. And sure, we got a lot of NIL money. We'll be able to get guys there. But even with all that NIL money, doesn't it seem weird? Did no high school players want any of that NIL money? Nobody. They cast a very short net last year in the NIL. And they got, what, Malik Renu, Peyton Sparks, Walker. Walker and Sparks are out of here. They're going somewhere else because they don't want to put up with this crap. Indiana University is Indiana basketball. And it's no shot at Purdue because Purdue has done an amazing job of taking over the mantle. And the sad thing is, right now, people complain about Indiana not going to the NIT or they say they shouldn't have went to the NIT. I don't even know if they would have been in the NIT. I think Butler's a three or a four seed. Butler's better than Indiana. Indiana State is better than Indiana. 
Purdue has proven they're light years better than Indiana. Luckily for Indiana, Notre Dame's down and Ball State's not very good. You got Bruce Pearl saying he would come from Auburn, Indiana's his dream job. And then you got IU fans. Well, he's a cheater. We don't want him. What do you want? You want a man that doesn't recruit high school kids? Do you want a man who says I and me when he talks about his team? It's supposed to be we. It's supposed to be us. It's not supposed to be me. Indiana basketball is supposed to mean something. It does, but only if you look before the year 2000. No matter what people say about Bobby Knight, and you had Branch McCracken, those are two of the greatest coaches of all time. Five national championships between them. Indiana fans have become to the point where they are basically, you got one side over here once he fired, one side here that doesn't, and then they call each other not real fans. It's not up to you to tell me whether I'm a real fan or not. And it's not up to you to judge my comments. It's up to you to listen to my comments, give me your opinion without fighting, without unfriending somebody, without blocking somebody, and without hanging up on them. That is what this world is. And if you're somebody that's doing that, yeah, you're woke because you can't handle an actual honest debate. So I'm going to wrap this show up by saying this. Uh, this show will be back next year. I will have a new co-host, somebody. And I also would like to say this, Brian Moore with the Got Woodson Facebook page. If you would like to come on and debate me about Mike Woodson, we can. But the problem with you is you have your opinion and nobody else's matters. You've got a Facebook page with 7,000 followers. That's awesome. Too bad there's 350 million people in the world. And your Facebook page is really not that big a deal. But makes you feel like a big man. That's fine. We gave you a voice at the grueling truth. You chose to shut it down. Why well, chose to shut you down? Because you showed what you were. You're the same thing you show everybody on your Facebook page. And that is basically, you're an intolerant ass. And that's fine. You can be that. I'm good with that. But if you want to come on here and debate me, I'll have you on anytime you want. Anybody that thinks I'm not a true Indiana fan because I don't approve of what you've seen or what we've seen this season or last season or the season before any season in, in this century, you're more than welcome to come on and enlighten me on why I'm not a true fan. This Indiana basketball season has been the worst I can ever remember. But thank God it's over. It's on the next year. Let's see what the transfer portal brings. And let's see how poorly Mike Woodson coaches them. Let's see what kind of arrogant asshole statements he makes. Because that's all he's good for. All right, guys. If you want to follow me on Twitter, go to at Grueling Truth. Well, it's X now, but at Grueling Truth. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and hit the like button if you're when you're if you're watching on YouTube. So we can spread the word. This is not ESPN. This is the grueling truth where the legends speak.